Hey guys, I'm slowly building and upgrading my home lab and I want to show you what device I'm using now as my primary router. And let me tell you, it's great. Little backstory. Until a few days ago, I used this stock router from my former internet provider. Disclaimer. My former internet provider here in Europe was O2. It's something like Verizon in the US. A big faceless corporation that doesn't care a bit about its customers. Everybody hates them, but sometimes there isn't any other option. So long story short, after a few years, I was using their services. They effed up my connection speeds. It went down like threefold. They overloaded the connection point I was using. Why, you might ask? Of course, money. More customers, more money. And their official solution for me was, we will downgrade your plan. Yeah, like that's a solution for the problem. Besides these crucial things, I didn't like the fact that my provider has the ability to monitor my router and all my traffic. There were open ports on the device so they can access and manage it remotely. And you are not allowed or even able to close those ports. That's not something we like. So I had to leave them. And as there was no better solution in my area, I turned my gaze to the skies where the almighty Elon with his Starlink resides. And it was decided. I ordered the Starlink set, all happy and excited to step into the brighter future. What a bummer it was when I found out that the Starlink router is, mildly put, very very stupid and you can't configure almost anything on it. Thus, hunt for better and more permanent solution began. And here is the result. Welcome. There were a few premises I set out for myself. As this is a home lab, not an enterprise-grade server house, I wanted to avoid breaking a bank to get something professional like MicroT routers. That's number one. Number two, it should be more than just a router, at least a firewall and a few other things. Number three, it should be fully manageable and customizable. And number four, it should be cheap to run, so no power-hungry monster machine. Luckily, the solution was closer than I thought. After a short research, I decided to go for PFSense, more on that in the following video, running on this mini PC named Topton 12th Gen Firewall. PFSense is an open source router and firewall solution backed by NetGate company, a big name in the industry, so I will not be worried about updates and sustainability in the long run. Quick research told me I shouldn't try to run this in a production environment on something that uses uh, Realtek NICs or network cards, simply because they're shit and cause more problems than they solve. And guess what? I tried it anyway. And what can I say? It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. It doesn't work well. Under higher loads, the NICs are hanging, crashing and whatnot basically unusable even for home environment. So, as I mentioned before, after some digging, I went for this device, Topton 12 Gen Firewall. On paper, it had everything I was looking for. Four Ethernet 2.5 gig ports, Intel-based architecture, this one is big, Intel NICs, the network interface cards, and I could even choose what CPU, RAM and disk drive specs I want inside this mini PC. Great. So I went with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of NVMe storage. And I chose the Intel N100 CPU i226-V Nix with DDR5 RAM. As I did my calculations, this should be plenty enough to run everything I want on this device. And look at this. In this specification, it costs less than 240 bucks. You will get a lot for your buck, but I'm not finished. As I ordered this from AliExpress, the seller anticipated that I would need to pay import taxes on the device here in Europe, so they deducted the anticipated additional cost on my side and sold it to me for under 200 bucks. As I've said, great value for your money. Few days has passed and the package was at my doorstep. Here we have it. Let's unbox it together. As you can see, the box is undamaged. That's a good sign these days. Opening. The device is nicely and tightly packed. Everything seems okay. Okay, what's underneath? Bunch of things. European adapter from other systems. I wonder why, but hey, free stuff, thanks. A SATA cable. These tiny screws are actually for fixing an SSD drive inside the casing. And the power supply with the correct EU version cable. Now I really wonder why they included that white adapter. And that's all. The device itself, power supply, SATA cable, screws and power adapter. That should be all. Let's have a look at this beauty. Starting from the back. There are four 2.5 gig Ethernet ports and a power connector. On the side there is a cooling grid. And at the front are the power button, two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, HDMI and DisplayPort outputs. All seems reasonable enough for a device like this. The casing is aluminum alloy and seems sturdy enough. It will function as a heatsink. But I hope it doesn't really need this big heatsink. We'll see in a moment. Well, I'm a curious guy and not a patient one. Let's look inside this thing. Let me grab my screwdriver real quick. This should be easy enough. There are four screws at the bottom. One, two, three, four. And this is it. Okay, these front and back panels came off. What do we have here? 
you can't miss the big thing, is the NVMe drive. Next to it is the unmistakable RAM module. Note in this version it's only one slot of DDR5 non-ECC RAM. This yellow thing is of course a battery for the CMOS memory. These pins here are for the LEDs. Next to it are SATA power and data connectors. So as you can see, you can actually attach two drives to it. One M2 NVMe and one classic SATA drive. There are also this SIM card slot and mini PCI Express slot for wireless cards. Okay, I would say those are all the important parts and I can close this thing down. What you might have noticed is there is no cooling fan inside or outside the device. So this should be pretty much noiseless. And the manufacturer states that it is made to be run 24 seven. So it's quite ideal for my use case. So what can you run on this thing software wise? Pretty much anything you want. All the major operating systems like the latest Windows 11, Linux, let's say Ubuntu or Debian, FreeBSD based systems like PFSense or OpenSense, anything you want. Like C and Docker containers, in fact, you can run bare metal hypervisors like Proxmox, VMware and Unraid on it. So if you want to build a cheap home lab server cluster with these, you most certainly can. Yeah, it's a mini PC, granted, but it lost none of its potential. You're free to experiment. What's next? Let's just run it. I'll connect the peripherals to it, display keyboard and mouse and a network to it and start it up. I wonder what's inside it by default. As you can see, it comes pre-installed with OpenSense. Let's shut it down. As I've said, you can install whatever you want on it. Okay, what about power consumption? The manufacturer states that this Intel N100 version has TDP of around 6 watts. That's actually not bad, not bad at all. But what I found out when I installed PFSense on it and disconnected everything except network cables, it consumes under average load, not during stress, stress testing, around 10 to 12 watts, so let's say 11 watts. So if you want to run power efficient router like me, this is well within the borders. One thing I noticed and have complaints about is its power supply unit. It's huge. Its size is like half of the whole computer. It's ugly. And when connected to the wall and the computer is turned off, it emits some weird noise. Listen to this. And let me tell you, it's loud. I wouldn't be able to work with this in the same room as me. But as soon as you turn on the computer, the sound is gone. I just wanted to show you that not everything is dandy here. But if this concerns you, these devices, power specification and connector are pretty common. So you can grab a better power supply from your local shop. I see this as less than a minor issue. To sum it up, getting a power efficient Intel mini PC with four two and a half gig Intel Nix, eight gigabyte of RAM and 128 gigabytes M2 NVMe drive for under 200 bucks is pretty darn good deal. I can recommend. If you have any more questions about this device, just shoot them my way in the comment section under this video. I've been running this device for some time by now, so hopefully I can answer anything you like to know. In the following video, I'll show you how easy it is to install PFSense router software on this thing. If this video brought you value, please be so kind and consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. It means a lot to me. Thanks for watching and as always, have a great day. See you. Bye.